Thank you and welcome back to another one of my videos. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the LGBTQ plus tag because it is a tag that I've seen on the internet and I thought I'll do that because it's Pride Month. So let's just get right into the questions. I am a cis lesbian. Boring. <laughs> I, oh, that's a good question. How did I discover it? I can vividly remember the first time I seen two girls kissing and I was like, oh, this hits different. I don't know what age I was. I must have been about 12, 13. It was Avril Lavigne's video for rock and roll. It's, it's, a, it's a good song, it's a bop, but the music video is a bit weird. But there's a part in the music video and I'm gonna sound like I am on crack when I say this, where the dog they let the dog drive and he crashes the car because he had a drinking problem. Not because he's a dog, just because he had a drinking problem. And then Avril Lavigne and her friend make out in the back seat. And I remember like, I used to search up that music video so much when I was younger. And I think that's when I kind of started like discovering that like gayness was kind of a thing that I liked. But yeah, that was like the first like gay awakening that I remember and I still go back and watch that video every so often because it's it's just it's crazy <laughs> the first person I told was my group of friends at the time and I actually came out as bi initially I didn't come out then as a lesbian until I was 17 and again I firstly came out to my best friend at that time via FaceTime which time? Other LGBTQ plus folks will know that you never stop coming out. There's there's not like a definitive moment when you come out and you're just out to the entire planet. Coming out for me was awkward and it's still awkward because I am not out to a lot of people and that might surprise people because if you know me in real life, I am so confident with like my sexuality and I just make gay jokes all the time, but I'm not actually out to the majority of my family, which kind of sucks. Uh, and I don't know how that's gonna work. You know, when I get older and hopefully like settle down and get married, um, I don't know how that's actually gonna work, but they're just gonna have to roll with it. But coming out for me, I would describe it, if I could describe it in one word, I would probably say awkward. Growing up in a small village in Northern Ireland, there's not like a ton of acceptance out there. I still have to hide my sexuality a lot, which is weird because I'm so confident with it when I'm in safe spaces and, and, and stuff where I, I feel like I can be who I am, but in the spaces where I can't, I'm like, it's just, it's just like I go right back into the closet when I need to. I've never actually made like a proper coming out video on YouTube and I it might be something I do this month or maybe sometime in the future because I actually don't know how to talk about it because coming out's awkward. I'm just gonna leave it at that, but I might do a full video on it. Everybody was quite accepting. My friends at the time were super accepting. There was one person in the group who wasn't. I'll never forget this moment because it was like the first time I experienced homophobia. So I don't think you ever forget that. We were like walking down the corridor and I was like, you know, this doesn't really change anything about me. I've been, you know, at the time I came out as bi and I was like, I've been this, like I've been bi for, you know, longer than, from when I told you so like it literally changes nothing and she was just like oh it's just creepy because like you're on an all geared school and whatever and I'm going like how is it creepy though? Would it be creeper creepy in a mixed environment? Is, is mixed schools creepy if there's straight guys there and straight women there? Like oh it's very mad at her. Mostly positive though like my mom was very accepting and still is very accepting like my newfound group and stuff have been also, they're very accepting of me and who I am and yeah. I'm stuck between who's the man in the relationship. When I was in a relationship, I got that. I hated getting asked it because I'm like, we're two women. That's the point. There's also this thing where people, for some reason, I don't know if this happens with gay men, but I know it definitely happened with me and I've been talking to other lesbians and they say it happens to them too but you're just like sitting minding your own business being gay and shit and then like somebody will ask the question is this how you guys you know have sex and you're like no and then they want you to like describe it mostly strictors will make you like describe it and you're like 
I don't want to talk about this. So yeah, there's a lot of things I hear, but I would say it's so it's, it's a mix between people asking me, what are the lesbians of sex though? And straight girls also asking, who's the man in the relationship? Like there has to be a man. My favorite thing about the community is that it creates a safe space for young queer people who mightn't be accepted by their families and stuff. But I find so much wholesome like stories on the web where like queer people will be like, oh, you know, my family isn't accepting and stuff. And they're able to like meet a group of friends who are in the community and are able to like talk to them and you know help them out with things and create that little safe space for them. I love that that we can do that. I just think that's really good that we have something like that now for young queer people and I just think that's really wholesome. I like it. I like seeing happiness. <laughs> no, I haven't actually. I really want to go to a gay bar. There is a gay bar in Dublin and we were gonna go there when we were in Dublin Pride, but we didn't. There's so many of them. I would have to say my favorite I mean, I know I shouldn't pick favorites, but I would have to say my favorite is Rose and Rosie because Rose and Rosie, I started watching Rose and Rosie when I was 13 and they helped me come to terms with my sexuality. They're also one of the reasons why I wanted to do YouTube. Yeah, I was just like, oh my God, they're lesbians and they're talking about being lesbians on YouTube. And I was just very happy about that. And like, I've met them and they're so nice. They're lovely. They even like watched like Rosie was like, oh, I've watched your videos. Like she knew who I was. And I just, yeah, I, I can't, I can't pick anybody else. I have to pick Rose and Rosie. They are my queens. So that's my answer. <laughs> I am not going to talk about how we met because it's weird to talk about my ex and how we met on camera. I'm not going to do that. Yes, I was in a relationship and I did announce it in a video. Uh, last year, it has since ended. I live in Northern Ireland. Yes. <laughs> um, the reason why I preface that is because like people seem to think just because gay marriage is now illegal in Northern Ireland. Keep in mind, it was only legalized this year, but people seem to scratch over the fact that discrimination still exists in Northern Ireland. I remember when I was in secondary school, I was walking home and I literally got shouted at Dyke like walking up the road to my own house. I remember getting the school bus. I was, you know, some of the things that were said to me, I will never ever repeat them because they are absolutely disgusting, but I was harassed on the school bus. Even in school, when people started to find out, like I had come out to my friends, people started to like hear whispers that I was like a lesbian and stuff. And, you know, I would get shit for being in the PE changing rooms. They just acted like I was going to perv on them. That kind of shit goes on in Northern Ireland and people think it doesn't, but it does. And it still does. It doesn't even annoy me anymore, but it also annoys me that it exists and that LGBT people here have to tolerate it because there's nothing we can do. Even though we do have gay marriage legalized here now, it doesn't mean that discrimination has just disappeared because one bill passed. There is still so much work to be done here in terms of acceptance. And I mean, like, I'm speaking from my own experience here in Northern Ireland. I, you know, I don't know, but I assume that it's not a localized issue just here, that it is also a global issue. Oh, I'm gonna do two for this because oh, there's too many. My favorite LGBT movie Hands down, I have an answer for this immediately. It is a little film called The Miseducation of Cameron Post. It is a great film. I, I just love it. I love like the way it's filmed. I love the set design in it. I love the characters. Special mentions for films. You gotta have Carl in there. That's a good one. Anybody comes to me going, oh, I like Blue is the Warmest Color. Blue is the Warmest Color is a piece of shit. <laughs> I, I hate that movie. I haven't seen Below Her Mouth, but apparently it's kind of like Blue is the Warmest Color um, terms. TV show wise, you've heard me talk about it on the channel. That is Winona Earp. Absolutely love that TV show. The LGBT representation in that TV show is amazing. Also, um, in terms of TV shows, there is a brilliant one that I watched. I believe it must have been last year, came out 
and it's called Tales of the City. They, uh, it's a show on Netflix. Ellen Page is in it. That should be enough to sell you on watching it because Ellen Page is great. It's a fantastic TV show and the thing that I really loved about it is it kind of taught you a little bit of um, history of the LGBTQ plus community as well uh, while you're watching it and I mean there's nothing more that I love than learning whilst watching something entertaining so I definitely recommend watching that. Oh, <laughs> there is some assumptions that I've heard. Um, oh, oh, I love this one. Oh my God, watching this gay couple on TV is gonna make my child gay. I watch straight people growing up and I ain't straight. If you're gonna have like a, a way in right, should you not love that child unconditionally? So why are you worried about your child becoming gay from watching gay stuff? I mean, all slurs are bad, but I think for me, like, dyke is up there. I know I use it in jokes and stuff with me and my friends. It's okay to use it, like, as that, but when somebody calls me that word in an aggressive way, it's not okay. Growing up, I even had issues with the word being used in jokes, being used in content for lesbians. I, I hated that word. But now I've, I've come to terms that I call myself a flaming dyke all the time and it's fine. I feel like there is a stereotype in the community that it is mostly just white, flamboyant gay people, right? I think sometimes we forget and we shouldn't forget and I'm certainly not going to forget the history behind the LGBT community. You know, Pride was a riot. We had to literally fight for our rights and it wasn't white gay people that fought for those rights. It was black queer people that fought for those rights. So I recommend that every LGBTQ plus person reads up about LGBT history. I don't want to talk too much about it. I know uh, a lot about it but I feel like there's better resources out there for you to learn about it especially with like the Black Lives Matter movement there has been so much stuff that I have learned through that movement so I don't want to talk too much about it and I don't believe it's my place to kind of talk about that as a white privileged person. Every pride moving forward should remember what happened at Stonewall and we should you know we should appreciate um, the things that black people did for this community. So that is my two cents. And that is LGBTQ plus tag finished. I had a really good time doing it. Some of the questions were very personal and stuff, but I think it's good sometimes to get a little bit personal. I and mean, it is Pride Month. And I do want to talk about this stuff more. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit a big thumbs up and also subscribe to the love. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next video.